called pragmatic and keeping its promises. What were those promises, Mr. Speaker? Promises, Mr. Speaker, that we would implement policies that will offer a brighter and more prosperous future for all New Zealanders. Stark contradistinction, of course, to the late, unlamented, lacklustre, lackadaisical, unlamented Labour administration. Administration, Mr. Speaker, which recoiled from making decisions, shrunk away from the hard calls, to resile, to resign from meaningful action became the default position. The default position. The new black among the old reds. Mr Speaker, has so often, Mr Speaker, they were overcome with torpor. Torpor, languor and lassitude when hard decisions needed to be made. Somnolence and solipsism characterised their caucus. A hard decision or new idea, Mr Speaker, a hard decision or new idea as rare as a spit roast at a vegetarian feast. As rare as a spit roast at a vegetarian feast, Mr Speaker. Very similar, in fact, today, Mr Speaker. That was then, and this is now, and nothing has changed, as the French would say, plus ça change, plus la même chose. A long legacy, Mr Speaker, a long legacy of nine years, a long legacy of supervised neglect, a supervised neglect, Mr Speaker, of New Zealand's well-being, our nation's prosperity, our people's future. In a statement seemingly made from a parallel universe or alternatively from the vantage point of a separate reality, possibly, Mr Speaker, possibly from alongside Animal, Miss Piggy or possibly Kermit, just today on breakfast television, Mr Speaker, the Honourable Phil Goff reiterated that Labor would reverse any tax cut made by this government in the forthcoming budget. I say that again, would reverse any tax cut made by this government in the forthcoming budget. So, if per chance we should reduce taxes from 38% 38 cents and not a 33, Labor will raise taxes, take more money from hard-working New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, Labor's mantra has never changed. Labor will raise taxes. As Churchill observed, as Churchill observed, Mr Speaker, a neighbour nation trying to tax itself to prosperity is like a man standing in a bucket trying to lift himself up by its handle. Trying to lift himself up by its handle, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, if the late Labor government had any economic policy at all, it could be summarised as, if it moves, tax it. If it continues to move, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidise it. Mr Speaker, John Key leads a government as I said, which is principled, pragmatic and focusing on finding solutions. Now, what are some of these solutions? Well, some of these solutions include stock taking of New Zealand's mineral resources. Stock taking. Now, we've had historical grandstanding, Mr Speaker, from the other side of the House. Historical grandstanding. But let me say this. Let me say this. A good, a good housekeeper knows what's in the kitchen cupboard. Now, as a boy from the Naki, as a boy from the Naki, a proud New Zealand, a proud New Zealand, concerned for the future of my children, the children of all New Zealanders, I would like to offer my thanks to the perceptiveness and the far-sightedness of those people in the 50s and 60s who did a stock take of the North and South Taranaki Bight, Mr. Speaker. $2.8 billion of oil into our economy last year, the third leg in New Zealand's major exports. Mr Speaker, this government is reshaping the mesh in many areas and at different levels. What are the other, some of the other things that we are doing? Some of the things that have been ignored by the previous lacklustre administration. Mr Speaker, of course, we are looking at benefit reform. National believes that a fundamental dignity of right of being is the ability to work. Our future-focused practice aims to reform our welfare system by unashamedly putting the focus on work. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to bring in some part-time work testing. We're going to shift the focus onto what people can do rather than what they can't do. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Honourable Nanaya